Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Proudly presenting Photoplay Magazine's gold medal award picture, The Stratton Story, starring James Stewart and June Allison. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very special evening in the Lux Radio Theater because we present the screenplay that you have chosen as your favorite for the year 1949. Tonight's play was selected by the moviegoers of America in a nationwide poll conducted by Photoplay magazine. It's the Stratton story. In the Stratton story, you'll hear James Stewart and June Allison, the original stars of this metro golden Mayor hit. It's the drama of one man's superhuman courage in the face of an overwhelming handicap. A true story of a real-life hero, Monty Stratton. After tonight's performance, the Stratton story will receive Photoplay Magazine's coveted gold medal award, one of Hollywood's highest honors. The vote of the American people is what counts, whether it's for a motion picture or a product. And Lux Flakes have been your choice for years, whenever housewives insisted on quality and economy. An award of confidence we know Lux Flakes will continue to win. Now, here's the curtain for Act One of The Stratton Story, starring James Stewart as Monty Stratton and June Allison as Ethel, with John McIntyre as Barney. This is the true story of a young American, a story told to you by a man who knew him well enough to help shape his entire life a man named Barney Wilde. I met Monty Stratton one autumn afternoon near a little country town, Wagner, Texas. I was bumming my way to California when I saw a ball game going on. After the game, I went looking for the fellow who'd pitched. You calling me, mister? Yeah, I... Hey, can you wait a minute? That game you just pitched. Nice going, son. Thanks, mister. You ever think of pitching regular professional baseball? Oh, I guess that's just about all I ever do think about. Well, what are you wasting your time around here for? Wasting my time? I get $3 every time I pitch a game. $3, huh? Son, I think you and I ought to have a little talk. Where are you heading? Home, just about four miles up this road here. Four miles, huh? That will probably kill me, but... Son, I sure like the way you throw a baseball. Thank you, sir. Why, you play ball, mister? Yes, uh, sir, man. Slow down, will you? Where, where'd you play? Where'd you play? Uh, Chicago, Cleveland, Boston. Oh, big legs. Uh, that's right. One time I was a pretty fair catcher. I could teach you a lot about baseball, son. Well, I, I uh, don't quite get it. Yeah, I know. Look at me now. Huh? Down and out or bum. Oh, no, no. I, I didn't mean that. Well, I was a fool. A grand slam, double barrel fool. Broke training, hit the bottle. And, well, here I am. But seeing you pitch this afternoon was like seeing a dream come true, finding a hot prospect, coming back into baseball. What, you staying around here? Well, not exactly. I was on my way to California. Oh. Of course, it doesn't have to be California. Uh-huh. I, uh, I could, uh, well, I might, I might, uh, I could help. You, uh, you ever do any farm work? Oh, I've, uh, Yeah, I've... You, you sure look mighty flabby. <laughs> Son, I got muscles I haven't even used yet. Uh-huh. Well, I, uh, I live with my ma. Oh, she, ma. Uh, Yeah, she doesn't think very much of baseball. Well, maybe if I spoke to her... No, no, but... no, you better let me do the talking. You see, mister, this is what us baseball men would call a squeeze play. Now, just let me think on it as we walk home. <laughs> Well, uh, Ma, I uh, was talking to Mr. Wilde here before. He's sort of looking around for something to do, and I thought uh, maybe sort of uh, figure it might hole up here for the winter. Don't say. Uh-huh, you know, sort of help out around the place. You know as well as I do, Monty. We can't afford no hired hands. Oh, well, he wouldn't expect any pay, you know, just room and keep. Didn't but you know course... you're so overworked, son. Oh, no, no, it's not that, Ma, but just a lot of things need doing. When your father died, Monty... 
He left this place to you. It's yours, and you're old enough to know what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'll, uh... I better get that feed out of the barn. Yeah, yeah, we better get that feed out of the barn. Mr. Weil. Yes, ma'am? This farm's all Monty's got, Mr. Weil, but it's worth something. But you and Monty, well, you go ahead and talk baseball. Maybe someday he'll do as good as you did. <laughs> Couldn't blame his ma. All baseball meant to her was seeing Monty wind up like... Uh, well, like me. Anyway, I stayed there. And day after day, I tried to pass on to Monty what I knew about the game, what I knew about pitching. And then, around March it was, I knew there wasn't any more I could teach him. That's it, Monty. You're doing fine, son. Well, no more for today, huh? Well, we barely got started here. That's no workout. Put your jacket on. Keep your arm warm. I've been going to say this all week, Monty. Say what? That you're ready. You're joking. Well, I don't mean you've learned all there is to know about pitching, but from here on, you've got to learn it for yourself. We've got to get you some action. Well, not much action around here, Barney. Ah, but there is in California. Jimmy Dykes and the White Sox are starting spring training. The Chicago White Sox? All I have to do is say the word, and Dykes will give you a tryout. He will? Sure. But, but, but uh, out in California... Uh, I know. It's a long ways, and, and your mom. Ah, uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, uh... Let's, uh, go into the house, sir. Looks like we got another squeeze play coming up. You might just as well speak your mind, Monty. You got something to say? Say it. Well, it's just this, uh, Ma. Uh, Barney and I were sort of thinking about taking a little trip out to California. Is that so? Uh-huh. What baseball team's out there? That's the Chicago Whites. <laughs> How, how, how'd you know that? I didn't figure you'd be going all that ways for anything important, son. Well, this is important, ma'am. Oh? But... Worth giving up the farm for? Well, if they take him on, the least he'll get is $300 a month. That's a lot of money for just throwing a ball around. And I won't have to give up the farm. I saw Cousin Ernie. He said he'd be glad to take care of it while I'm gone. What makes you so sure they'll give you a try? They try just anybody? Well, they sure don't. But Barney and Jimmy Dykes are old friends. Who? He's the manager of the White Sox, so that way I'll get a chance for sure. The land's the only place where you're sure, son. Lots of people don't live on farms, Miss Stratton. Lots of people don't eat regular, too. You... You made up your mind, ain't you, Monty? I... I just gotta give it a try, Ma. Sure, son. Sure. You go on, then. You give it a try. Hey, Red, who's the kid warming up? Kid, Mr. Dykes. The tall, skinny one in the leather jacket. I don't know. I thought you sent him out there. I'll tell you who he is. The best right-hand prospect since Christy Mathis. Barney. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not you again. You bring that kid out here? You bet I did. I want you to have first crack at him. Thanks. He's got everything, Jimmy. I've been working with him all winter. Yeah? Who supplied the hooch? No, 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 Jimmy. No, I haven't had a drop since... <clears throat> well, this is him, Marty. Jimmy Dyke. Oh, I'm sure glad to Just meet you. Just a second, son. Barney's probably fills your head with a lot of cockeyed ideas. But I can't waste time with every kid he digs up. Jimmy, wait. Now, wait. How many the... times have I told you not to bother me this oh, way? I'm sorry I busted in on you like oh, this. Oh, that Mr. boy's hitchhiking walk miles to get here, Jimmy. Monty, wait a minute, Monty. Don't go running away like that. Hey, you, country. He means you, Monty. Wait a minute. Give me that mitt, will you, Eddie? Come on, country. Throw me a couple. Get that jacket off, Monty. Burn him in, boy. <laughs> That's some uniform, country. Well, the Wagner Wildcats, Mr. Dykes. That's the team I've been pitching for, the Wagner Wildcats. My, my. All right, let's see what you got. He really breaks them off, don't he? Simmer down, Barney. So you got a curve. Let me see your fast one. Well, I don't know. Maybe you better work out a while. Keep him around, Barney. He may have something. But for Pete's sake, get him a haircut. Sure, Jimmy, sure. <laughs> What'd I tell you, Marty? I knew he'd give you a chance. Uh, but when? When? What, what are we supposed to do now? Find us a room. Uh, oh, yeah, in a barber shop. Well, we found a hotel and met a few of the players who were staying there. That night, Monty went down to the lobby to kill some time. And in the lobby, he discovered a fascinating pastime. 
Monty had never seen a slot machine before. Ten minutes later, he had a pocket full of quarters and a new friend, a rookie named Eddie Dibson. Eddie was flat broke. He had a date that night with his girl. To make matters worse, she was bringing a friend along. But there was Monty, fresh from the sticks and ready to learn all about nightlife in the city. Well, they're very nice dancers, aren't they? I mean, uh, Dottie and Eddie. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, I... I guess I shouldn't be here at all. Oh? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, no, 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 no. It isn't you. It's me. I mean, it's Eddie. I, I, I don't know. I, but for some reason, he seemed awful anxious for me to tag along. Good friend of yours, hmm? Yeah, I, yes, he is. I just met him tonight, though. Come along, he says. I want you to meet the girls, he says. And come along. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh... I'm sorry I can't ask you to dance, but I don't know how. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I, I guess baseball's about all I know. Well, that's something. Have uh, you seen us work out yet? Yeah. Us? Who's us? The Chicago White Sox. No. No, I guess that's the one thing I've missed. You see, I'm just visiting here. I'm I'm from Omaha. Oh, uh, well, the team looks good. It looks awful good. I tell oh, you. that's very nice. I'll bet you're pretty good yourself. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm still trying out. I bet you can hit a baseball pretty far. No, I always, I'm not expected to hit very much. See, I'm, I'm a pitcher. Well, I'll bet you can pitch far. <laughs> no, you, you don't quite seem to get the idea, do you? You see, I just have to pitch from the mound to the plate. It's just about 60 feet. All right, then. I'll bet you can pitch fast. Well, sometimes you have to sort of rear back and sort of let them go fast, and then other times you just sort of sort of whip it like this, you see, and, and curve it in, sort of. And you get in spots and you just sort of floater in. It's uh, what you call a change of pace. And then there's um, Speaking something. of change of pace, would you mind telling me something? Just what is that noise? Noise? What? Well, every time you move, that, that jingling sound. Jingling? Oh, all oh, this. Huh? huh? <laughs> you see, that they have these, uh, what do you call these machines in the lobby of the hotel. I never saw them before, and I... Sort of wondered about them. Before I knew it, I dropped a quarter in, and a whole lot of fruit started spinning around. And I, then things sort of slid to a stop. And out came that. No, no, nothing happened. Not yet. Oh. Well, before I knew it, I was down to my last quarter. I sort of figured I might as well be broke as the way I was, so in went the last quarter, and the Fruit took off again, oranges and grapefruit and lemons and spinning around like a top. And then all of a sudden, the quarter started popping out like hens through a busted fence. Well, if you don't make it in baseball, Mr. Stratton, you've got a very fine future in gambling. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm through gambling. Why? Well, I, I found out how it feels to lose and what it's like to win. Why keep at it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now, like I said, this other fella, Eddie Dibson, had come with his girl. But one look at Ethel, and Eddie forgot all about Dottie. Eddie had it all figured out. Where's Dottie been hiding, you old oh, we'll make a big night out of this, Ethel. I'm going to take you to every spot in town. Oh, I wouldn't think of putting you to all that trouble, Eddie. Trouble! Look, if we're going someplace else, let's go. Someplace else? Sure, country, sure. Hey, waiter, check. Check. Now, there's a little place I know near Long Beach. Soft music, dancing under the stars. You want something, waiter? You asked for the check, sir? Oh, uh, he wants it. Him, give it to him. Hmm? Check, uh, sir. Or maybe you'd like hot hey, music. Now, hey, there's uh, a club in Hollywood that really... Eddie. Sit down. Huh? Eddie. Oh, uh, was... take care of it, will you, Monty? We'll make the rounds, baby, and what we don't hit tonight, we'll hit tomorrow. Take care of the man, Monty. We'll meet you out front. Yeah, take care of the man. $14.40. Uh, yes, sir. You got a pot? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, never mind. Here, we'll just, just spread out the napkin here. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Here you are. occur to you, Mr. Stratton, that I might not want to go home? That I might have wanted to go somewhere with Eddie? Well, what you wanted wasn't so important. Oh, it wasn't? No, 
No, I see. Was, what was important was the way Eddie was treating Dottie, you know, trying to shine up to you. You know, he shouldn't have done it in front of her like that. You know? Or in front of you. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not what I mean. Hey, I, this is it, ain't it, bud? Hmm? Uh, yeah, well, I guess it is. Yes, this is it. Uh, well, uh, can you wait, driver? I'll be right back. No case, you. Look, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry about tonight. I, boy, <laughs> You sort of got stuck with me, didn't you? Oh, that's silly. No, no, I didn't. I, I, I just never had much experience <laughs> with girls. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's the fun? You. <laughs> you got stuck with the chair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sure did, didn't I? I was <laughs> worth it to get out of there. Well, good night. Marty, wait. Hmm? Well, I'm sorry about tonight, too, but... Y you see, I haven't had too much experience myself with ball players. Well, I'm not exactly a ball player yet. I haven't made the team yet. Oh, you'll make it. Well, how do you know? You said you didn't know anything about baseball. I could learn. Uh, when, when do you go home to Omaha? Well, not for a while yet. I'm, I'm staying here with my aunt. Well, time for me to come and call on you? Could be. Not Ethel. Good night, Marty. In just a moment, our stars will return with Act Two of the Stratton story. I hear, Libby, you're collecting travel folders. Oh, just a dream so far, John. I got the wanderlust at Paramount watching the Pine Thomas production of Captain China. That's a rip-roaring adventure story if I ever saw one. John Payne in the title role gives a magnificent performance. What a fighter he is. And Gail Russell looks more beautiful than ever. Oh, she's ravishing. As a passenger on a tramp steamer, she adds a delightful bit of romance. The typhoon scenes in Captain China got me. They were so realistic, I, I practically hoped the skipper keep the ship afloat. <laughs> well, the ship was definitely real, and so rough that when the picture was finished, Gail said she'd take the smooth sailing of a sailboat or a cabin cruiser from now on. Certainly more relaxing. And you can wear such pretty clothes when you know there's a box of Lux Flakes not far away. Gail has a sharkskin rayon slack suit she loves for sailing. Or, if she wants to tan, she takes along some little boy shorts in butcher linen and a jersey halter top. A cargo of Luxables, huh? Gail insists on Lux Flakes for all her washable rayons and nice cottons. They stay so fresh and bright all season. A smart girl. Washing tests prove that Lux Flakes care really makes a difference. Wrong washing methods soon fade colors, weaken fabrics. But even the most delicate shades stay enchantingly fresh and gay the safe Lux Flakes way. And it's such easy care. Just a swish in these rich, gentle suds... And your dress, your blouse, your slacks are as lovely as ever. Why not give all your washables that lovely, luxe look? We return you now to William Keeley. Act two of The Stratton Story, winner of Photoplay Magazine's Gold Medal Award. Starring James Stewart as Monty Stratton and June Allison as Ethel. Those next few weeks, well, they were quite a strain. Between falling in love and trying out for the White Sox, Monty just didn't know where he stood. But one afternoon in the dressing room... Hey, you, country. Oh, here it comes, Barney. Yeah, Mr. Dykes. Five innings this afternoon, Jimmy, and he didn't give up a hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, kid, the team goes east tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're gonna take you with us. Barney, did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? What are you planning to do, Barney? Well, well I, I guess I don't exactly know. Well, look, Mr. Dykes, Barney's the best... Can't the have best people man. hanging around doing nothing. I'll, 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 I'll do anything, Jimmy, anything. Like yeah. what? Offhand, I can't think of anything. Unless you'd like to coach the young pitchers. <laughs> Get in the office. We'll sign a couple of contracts. The next day at the railroad station, Ethel was there to say goodbye to Mark. We didn't have very much time together, did we? No, not... Enough to make me wish there was more. Gee whiz, California turned out much better than I thought it was going to. Well, it was nice, you're making the team, wasn't it? Oh, no, that's not what I mean, you know it. I know, Marty. Bye, Ethel. Let's get going, boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, right away. You will write, won't you? Well, I'll never be able to write down what I'm thinking, though. Well, how will I know you're thinking about me if you don't write? Hey, country, kiss her goodbye and get on the train. Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that Mr. Dykes. He's a very smart man, darling. And then the season started. Detroit, Cleveland, St. Louis, back to Chicago again. And so far, Monty Stratton's services to the Chicago White Sox consisted of batting fly balls to the outfield in the warm-up before the games. On this day, the Yankees were in town, murdering. Now, well, the one thing about the dugout, Barney, you get a good view of the game. Boy, I, I ought to pay admission. Yeah, well, you can learn plenty just sitting here. Double for Gary. Uh, there goes Dykes. He's taking the pitcher out. What a gang, them Yankees. If a pitcher's going to get by, he's got to give them what they don't expect. Outthink them. Yeah, well, they don't have to worry about me outthinking them. Boy, every time I get paid, I feel like I'm stealing. Come on, Dykes. Put a pitcher in there. All right, Stratton. Get out there. Huh? What, me? No, Jimmy, no, not at a time like this. But those Yankees have sent more pitchers to Omaha. You wanted you... the kid to get a chance, didn't you? Well, he's got it. Now pitching for Chicago, number 25, Marty Stratton. You know who he's pitching to. Dickey, that's all. Just Bill Dickey. Another ball player. Forget about the runners, kid. Just pitch to him. <laughs> Tell me it's foul, Jimmy. Tell me it's foul. What do you know? Clear over the center field wall. Omaha. Yeah, Monty went far in his big league debut from Chicago to Omaha. And that's how Ethel happened to have an unexpected visit. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, Monty. What are you doing here in Omaha? I thought you were going to go down... I know, I know, I know, I know. Now, just sit down. I've got a problem. But you said in your letter you might pitch this week. Yeah, I did. Well? That's what I want to talk to you about. Well, what happened? I, everything, honey. Now, you know, when I left you in California... What was the score? Now, that's not important. The thing that's bothering me is... Well, they can't expect you to win every game. Honey, they don't expect me to win any games. I've been farmed out to Omaha. Well, they don't put you in jail for playing in Omaha. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with Omaha. It's just that, I don't know, I, I might not even make it here. First thing I know, I'll be back on the farm. Well... Don't you like the farm? Sure, sure. It's all right, but it... Well, it, then? Well, I, I don't... It's just that... That things are are different now, that's all. Now there's you. Would it help any if, if I said I love you? That's the problem. Oh, I see. No, no, you don't see. I don't know. No matter what I was doing, I kept thinking about you. And every time I'd see something exciting, I'd... I kept wishing that you were there to see it with me. I don't know if that's love, man. I really got it. Oh, you had me worried. But I, I had all sorts of plans for us. Now, now I, I don't know where I'm going. Oh, but it doesn't matter to me. It matters to me, honey. It matters to me. I, a man's got to know where he's going. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, just, just give me a chance to make it. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to let you down. All right, Monty, if, if that's what you want. No, you're what I want. Oh, I love you, Monty. You could never let me down. Monty. Yes, dear? What was the score? 16 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a fine pitcher. Uh -huh. There's a tailor in Chicago who gives a suit of clothes to every ball player who hits the scoreboard in the center field. And as of yesterday, the New York Yankees are the best dressed team in baseball. <laughs> Monty pitched six ball games for Omaha, won them all, three shutouts. That was good enough for Jimmy Dykes. He brought Monty back to the White Sox. Only this time, a girl named Ethel tagged along because now she was Mrs. Molly Stratton. That night, a few of the boys gave him a little party at the hotel. 
just proves what I've been saying. How could a guy like you, country, get a gal like Ethel? Oh, it wasn't easy, Mr. Lyons. I just wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> oh, she's pretty, Ted, but she's not very smart. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. Here come the bombers. Bombers? Yeah, a few of the Yankee players. Yeah, this is what they look like, honey, when they're just civilians. Uh, hi, Lou. Hi, fellas. Yeah, uh, I guess you know everybody. Oh, uh, this is Monty Stratton. Stratton, this is Bill Dickey. Mr. Dickey, Mrs. Stratton. How do you do? How do you do? Well, we met you earlier this season, didn't we, Stratton? Man, you met me and everything I pitched. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have met you, Mrs. Stratton. Thank you. Oh, Why, he's awfully nice. Uh-huh. Well, wait till you see him tomorrow, honey. Boy, they, they don't call them the bombers for nothing. Wow. Some poor guy's going to have a rough afternoon. Yeah, could be. Hey, by the way, Barney, who's Dyke's going to pitch tomorrow? You. Yeah. Who? Me? A couple of the boys have sore arms. Uh, Ethel. Yes, dear? Our baggage. You unpacked anything yet? No, not yet. Don't. That next day was Monty's real start as a big league ball player. Monty won that ball game all by himself, even to driving in the win and run. And that's just about the way it went all the rest of that season. Not that he won every game, but from then on, the fans knew that Monty Stratton was just about as fine a pitcher as they'd see in the league. In October, Monty and Ethel went down to the farm. <laughs> Well, now, if you'll call off your dog, ma'am, I'm selling some books here that you might like to see. Monty! Oh, land sakes, I didn't even know you, son. New clothes and all. Yeah, that isn't the only thing new, Ma. Here's Ethel. Hello, Ma. Oh, Ethel. <laughs> Seems to me, son, you've been running over with luck. Oh, I sure have, Ma. Got a new car, too. Oh, yes. Bought myself a bucket of bolts. Hey, uh, oh, Eddie, uh, Ernie. Yeah. Howdy, Monty, howdy. Ethel, this is my cousin Ernie. If it wasn't for Ernie, I never could have left here. Hello, Ernie. Ma'am, here you're pitching good, Monty. Well, don't tell me you're a fan now. Nope, just heard about it. Well, I guess you won't be needing me anymore, huh, Monty? Well, uh, I sort of wish you'd stick around, Ernie. Uh... We got a lot of things he could fix up around here. A lot you know well, no, about always, it. Always, always fences to mend and some fresh paint, maybe. And then, uh, maybe, maybe I'd better build one of those nursery rooms. You leave your mouth open like that, Ma, you're liable to catch a fly in it. <laughs> Monty. Ethel. Yeah, well, now, how about some supper, Grandma? <laughs> Monty went through the next season like a house of fire. The fans ate him up. The newspapers, too. He was all that Jimmy Dyke said he was. Right now, Barney, I wouldn't trade Monty Stratton for any other pitcher in baseball. What a future that boy's got. And Monty had someone else now to win games for. A brand new baby boy. But after a while, I began to worry. Ethel, too. Something had happened to Monty. As often as not, he'd, he'd disappear after a game. He'd tell Ethel it was for interviews, newspaper guys, but I knew different, and so did Ethel. Anyway, they were back in Texas now, and Monty was a farmer again for the winter. A little dressy, ain't you, son? My land, Ethel, just look at the dude. Nice shave, too. Oh, no, not another press interview, Monty, not down here. No, 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 no. I just thought maybe we ought to go out and do a little celebrating. You know, Junior's going to be six months old tomorrow, so come on, come on, we're going out to dinner. Well... Give me a chance to catch my breath. You know, Ma, this is an event. We don't get to do much celebrating in Chicago. Oh, grab him while you can, honey. Well, now, look, you two girls are going to sit around and chew the fat. I'll go and celebrate myself. Goodbye. No, no, no. Hang on to him, Ma. I'll be ready in about five minutes. Would you, uh, care to dance, Mrs. Stratton? Monty, you're acting very strangely. Ordering champagne and now you... Well, a fine thing if a man has to plead with his own wife to dance with him. But, darling, you don't dance. You like to dance, don't you? Well, yes, I do. Well, maybe it's about time I learn. Now, come on, come on. Well, you're going to look awfully funny out there. It won't be the first time. Now, come on, come on. Marty. Marty, you're dancing. Oh, it's nothing, nothing. 
Oh, but you said you didn't know how. Well, I didn't, honey, but I... I just got sick and tired of everybody dancing with you but me. I... so I... Did, did you ever hear of Inez and Papania? Inez and Papania? Yeah, you ever hear them? Marty, you've been taking dancing lessons. Uh-huh, yeah. Inez and Papania. They got schools all over the American League. Of course, you, you don't always get Inez or Papania. I, for instance, in Detroit, I got a, a Drusilla. It was. In St. Louis, there's a little short one named Angelita. In Cleveland, but in all I... those press interviews, coming home late all the time. Mm-hmm. Honey, I, I took so many dancing lessons this summer, it's a wonder I had strength enough to pitch. Say, uh, I got a few fancy steps here. Do you think you can stick with me? Uh... Oh, I think I can stick with all you. All right, here we go. Well, now, just a minute. Well? I sure got me some fella. Oh, shucks, didn't you know that? Now, come on, come on, come on, let's bounce. <laughs> Good morning, Ma. Morning? It was morning when you came in last night. Now, what could you two have been doing all that time? Oh, just dancing. Dancing? With him? Mm-hmm. Well, sure, naturally. You were dancing? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if we did some more dancing tonight. How about a date, ma'am? Why, sure. sure. Only right now, Ma and I have a lot of canning to do. Now, what about my son? Where is he? Well, now, he's in perfectly good hands. He's helping Ernie feed the chickens. Well, it's a fine thing. I'm practically useless around here. Okay, suppose I get my gun and my dog and we'll look for a couple of rabbits, huh? Well, if it's all right with the rabbits, it's certainly all right with me. Now, see you in a couple hours, honey. Hey, dog, Hap! Hap, come on, come on, let's go, hunt. <laughs> Take it easy, Cap. Take it easy, will ya? I'm coming. Wait. Wait a minute. Get over this fence. My leg. My leg. It's my leg. Help. Hap, go home. Home. No, no, Hap. Hap. Get Ethel up. Get Ethel. Go home, Hap. It's not just my opinion, Mrs. Stratton. I've talked to two other doctors. It's, it's his leg or his life. But his legs are his life. The infection is spreading. If we don't operate immediately... Oh, but... But his leg, he's a ball player. He's a man whose life is in danger. We must have your permission to operate. Please sign this paper, Mrs. Sutton. <laughs> oh, my... Barney, thanks for coming. I flew down, Ethel, as soon as I heard. Oh, he's in there now. The operating room. Oh, Barney. That's right, kid. Cry it out. <laughs> well, he had some aliens. <laughs> At least he had that. Oh, but his leg, Barney. His leg. Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, we'll present the third act of the Stratton story. Right now, I'd like to introduce a charming and lovely young star of stage and screen, Miss Pamela Britton. 
You know you're in good company in your latest screen role in Key to the City, Pamela. I couldn't ask for a better break than to be in a picture with Clark Gable and Loretta Young, Mr. Keeley. Yes, they're at their best in Metro Golden Mare's sparkling new comedy. Working with George Sidney, the director, was a wonderful experience for me, too. Clark Gable is delightful as a happy-go-lucky, two-fisted mayor who falls in love with beautiful Loretta Young, a lady mayor. Just the ingredients for a grand comedy. And when you add Frank Morgan and Marilyn Maxwell, it just bubbles over. Yes, Loretta makes a lovely mare. You know, I'd vote for her any time. Girls will love her wardrobe, especially a ravishing chiffon nightgown that gets Clark Gable into a very amusing situation in Key to the City. The night he plays a major role in one scene. And I'm sure Lux Flakes play a major role, keeping it lovely for the camera. That's exactly what the wardrobe department told me, Mr. Kennedy. I discovered that Loretta Young is just as enthusiastic about Lux Flakes as the studio is. One day in her dressing room, she showed me some gorgeous new slips and nighties she had just bought. Luscious pastels that were really dreamy. We both agreed we wouldn't trust such delicate colors to anything but Lux Flakes. Smart girls everywhere feel the same way. They know that Lux Flakes are far safer for exquisite colors and fabrics. Actual washing tests prove it. Pretty slips and nighties washed the wrong way soon looked faded and old. But those washed with Lux Flakes stay fresh and bright as can be three times as long. It pays to play safe. Protect all your silk, rayon, nylon, and fine cottons, too, with gentle Lux Flakes care. Give all your nice washables that lovely Lux look. Thank you for coming tonight, Pamela Britton. Here's our producer... Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on Act Three of the Stratton Story, winner of Photoplay Magazine's Gold Medal Award, starring James Stewart as Monty Stratton and June Allison as Ethel. Monty came home from the hospital late in December. He'd lost a lot more than a leg. His hopes, his future, his spirit... All were gone. Day after day, he just sat by the window in the living room. Now and then, he'd hobble around on the crutches, but he'd have no part of the artificial leg. Nobody was even to mention it. He just seemed to be waiting for the end of the world. Lots of mail today, Mommy. Look, darling, hundreds of letters from people all over the country. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't want to look at them. Oh, but if people are nice enough to write to you, don't you think you would... No, if you like them so much, why don't you read them yourself? What do they say? Merry Christmas? Happy New Year? Uh, I was straightening things out in the shed, Marty. There's a lot of your stuff piled up out there. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Why don't you let me get your crutches? We'll go out there and look it over. I know what's out there. Get rid of it all. But there are things you'll want to hang on to, darling. Like this baseball, the one the team all signed, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it to me. All right, now, do you believe me? Get rid of it all. <laughs> oh, it's no use crying, Ethel. <laughs> no use at all, honey. Oh, he hasn't seen me cry, Mom. But sometimes I just can't hold it back anymore. What are we going to do? He's not interested in anything or anybody. Not even the baby. He's all by himself, I just can't seem to reach him. I guess it wouldn't be right if he was letting it roll off his back like it was nothing. But there's something about him, Ethel. Oh, I don't know. Good sense or something. And no doctor can amputate it. Well, I guess supper's ready. I'll go find Ernie. Isn't it past baby's bedtime? What's he doing here? I'll take him up, Molly. Come on, darling. Now you say goodnight to Uncle Ernie. Hey, hey he said it. He said goodnight. Regular blabbermouth, ain't he? Well, I'll be dog. Come here, young fella. Come here to Uncle Ernie. Come on. Come on. Now. Look, Molly, he's trying to walk. Well, darn if he ain't walking and talking all in one night. Oh, Molly, if we could only have a picture of that. His first real step. Isn't it wonderful? What's so wonderful about it? He's got two legs, hasn't he? Come on, give me my crutches. Marty. Well? Well, 
Maybe you'd rather be alone. I just thought, oh, Monty, don't let it do this to you, darling. Please. No, I... I don't know. I, I just came out of doors to look at that road. I used to do ten miles on that road like it was nothing and then pitch a ball game. Now I can get it. I can hardly get as far as the road, let alone walk on it. You told me once, a man's got to know where he's going. Where are you going, Monty? Uh, I guess I'm just not going. Before I could do things, but now I... Oh, I've made out much worse than you, Monty. You lost your leg, but I lost you. No, no, but I... I, I still feel the same way inside. It's just, oh, I know you feel the same, darling. That's what I've been trying to tell you all these weeks. Oh, give me your hand, Eva. I, if I just didn't love you so much. Oh, Marty. Oh, Marty. <laughs> I, I guess I got a squawk coming, too, huh? Sure wasted a lot of money on those dancing lessons, didn't I? Oh, Marty, darling. Gee, I sure got me some gal. Oh, shucks. Didn't you know that? Then on, Monty started to find himself. Oh, not that he changed overnight, but at least he was trying. Trying to get himself straightened out. And then... <gasps> Hey, uh, you're not doing so good, young fella. Now, come on, walk back to me. I'll try it again. Monty, is the baby all right? Uh, I don't know, honey. He sure is having a time learning to walk. Yeah, 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 that's what I told her. Uh, hi. Yeah, it looks like you and me got our work cut out for us. You and me both. He just can't figure out your crutches, can he? Hmm? Uh, 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 watch him for a while, will you, honey? There's something in the bedroom I want to get. I'll take him now, honey. All right. Junior and I need a little sunshine. We're going out. But, Monty, your crutches. Yeah, I figured it's time I tried out my store leg. Come on. Come on, put his coat on. <laughs> Come on, Daddy. We mustn't keep Daddy waiting. And please, please be a good boy. Now, you see these things, Junior? Well, they're feet. Now, those are yours, and these are mine. And they tell me you're supposed to pick them up and lay them down. Okay, now, let's, uh, let's see what happens, huh? Can we find it in the shed, Monty? Ma and I, your old pitcher's glove. You want to keep it? Oh, yeah, I guess so. I'll take it then. Well, what now is... keep it. Well, wait, wait a minute. minute. Here's Barney's old catcher's mitt. Let's have a catch. Come on. Well, wait, hey, watch how you throw that ball there. Take it easy now. Too much rich living. A little, little exercise won't hurt you at all. Now, come on. Let's throw it to you. Oh, fine looking catcher. I can't even see you behind the mitt. <laughs> how am I doing, country? Well, stop waving your arms. Come on, catch the ball. Hey, this is fun. Yeah, settle down a little. Maybe Cleveland can use you. Oh, no wisecracks now. You're not so good yourself. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have Barney come down and look you over. All right, now catch this. Oh, Marty. Oh. Oh, no, I, I'm all right. Let me get up here. Uh, leg. Uh, I, I think I know what I did wrong. Now, now come on, come on. Let's, uh, let's throw some more. By the way, can you wait a second? Oh. Hmm. Well, that's the first time I've ever been kissed by a catcher. Uh, catchers don't do that, huh? No, not as a rule. It sort of slows up the game. Well, just don't sit there. Let's see the big pitch. Come on, lay it in there, country. 
Where's all your stuff? Play it in there. Hey, let's see the fastball. The fastball? Well, even if I had one, what would you do with it? Well, now, you just throw it and find out. Well, you know, you're fixing to get your head knocked off. Don't argue with the catcher. Now, come on, right over the plate. Oh, okay. Come on, now, right in here, kid. Oh. Oh, uh, honey, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, gee, I'm... Just help me up. I caught it, didn't I? Well, let me see your hand. Uh, did you hurt your hand? What I am rubbing is not my hand. Oh, yes. <laughs> you just lost yourself a catcher. Hmm? Hmm. Never had a catcher quit me before. You never had a catcher before who was going to have a baby. Oh, uh, well, why don't we just sort... Uh, what? 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 <laughs> All during those months, I'd hear from Ethel pretty regularly. Monty was getting along fine, doing a day's work on the farm, even practicing his pitching, she said. And then Jimmy Dyke sent me down to Houston to scout some players in a big all-star game. I figured to stop by the farm the day after the game and visit with Monty. But he pulled a big surprise. He was at the game, in the dressing room, in uniform. Uh, don't look so shocked, Barney. It's me, all right. You mean to say you're going to pitch today? But uh, how can you? This is big baseball, Monty. Sure, I know. These are all-star teams. They're playing for big money. They're going to be tough. Who, who, who'd you cook this up with? Josh Higgins, the manager of the Southern team. Ethel know about it? No, no. She and Ma, they're up in the grandstand. I, they thought I'd just come down to say hello to some of the fellas. You, you asked Higgins to let you pitch? I... Ask Higgins to let me try, Barney. I had to find out just just what's what. And I, I well, I, well, I'd better start out the field. Uh, here are the batteries for today's game. The Western All-Stars, Gene Barrington pitching, R.T. catching. For the Southern All-Stars, Milliken catching. And in his first comeback appearance, Monty Stratton pitching. <laughs> Ethel had seen me now. I tried to stop her, but I couldn't. She met Monty just as he was limping out of the tunnel toward the field. Darling, darling, why didn't you tell me? Well, I wanted to surprise you, I guess. I got so I was throwing the ball pretty good, and I got all steamed up. And I, and I don't know. I, now I'm, I'm afraid. I... Afraid? Afraid of what? You've been beaten before. I, I keep saying to myself I'm just the same as everybody else. Why... I wanted to prove it. I wanted to show you, only, only I can't. I, I just can't go through with it. Marty, Marty, listen to me. I came down here just now hoping to stop you. I was just as afraid as you are. But you can't turn back now. That won't solve anything. You're a ball player, country. Well, us saying I'm still a ball player doesn't make me one. Well, then let's find out. Well, I... Do I... Do I look all right? Oh, you look just fine. Now go on, get out there. I guess this was the biggest moment of his life. A cripple, a man with an artificial leg trying to tell himself that he wasn't licked. That he still was a big league pitcher. But he just didn't have what he used to Oh, he's breaking his heart out there, Barney. Yeah, hitting everything he throws. He's he's looking at us, Barney. Oh. Come on, Marty boys. Stand there, kids. Oh, don't let them scare you, darling. You're doing fine. Just fine. This is it. There goes Higgins out there, Mom. How do you feel, Marty? I just can't get any stuff on the ball. I mean, those poor fellas in the outfield, they're going to be all worn out if this keeps up. Don't let him worry you, fella. Every man on the team is with you. Now loosen up. You're too tense. Make him play it your way. What, are you leaving me in? Yeah, I'm leaving you in. You see, I want to win this game. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. He's staying in, Ma. They're letting him pitch. Oh, watch him now. You just watch him now. He got out of the inning. Four hits off him and one run, and that's the way the score stayed for three more innings. One to nothing. And then Monty's teammates began to hit. Man on first, a man on second, two out, and Monty's turn to bat. A chance to tie the score. Monty Stratton was one of the few pitchers who could hit a baseball. And that's just what he did. A clean single over shortstop. He started off for first base running as best he could. Hoblin, he'd make it all right. He'd beat the throw. But then... Then he fell. His leg went out from under him, and he struggled in the dust, trying somehow to reach the bag. You're out! Josh Higgins was coaching at first base. Monty, Monty, 
You all right? Yeah, sure. Sure, I'm sorry, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I guess I started my slide too soon. <laughs> Monty pitched five more innings, pitched like nothing at all had ever happened to him. And the score still was one to nothing. In the bottom half of the eighth, the voice of the South started to hit again. Two outs, and two men on base, just like in the third inning. And Milliken, the catcher, came up to the plate. And then the Western All-Stars called a little conference. They decided to walk Milliken. But if they walk him, Barney, the bases will be loaded. Now, they know that, honey. Well, then they're walking him just to get at Monty. Yeah, well, that's baseball, then. Now, let's see what Higgins does. He's got to take Monty out and put in a pitch hitter. Attention, please. The Southern All-Stars are going to put in a pitch hitter for Stratton. I'd sure like to see you finish this game, Monty. It was just up to me, but every guy on the team has a big stake in this. Well, I, I think I can get him in, Josh. But we'll run behind, Monty. The base is loaded. I got to put in a hitter. Let him hit, Josh. We'll take our chances. You can do it, Monty. I'll oh, sure. take your cut, boy. Get up there at the plate. Sure. Looks like the team wants you to stay in, Monty. Go ahead, take your cut. Attention, please. Stratton is not leading the game. He'll take his turn at bat. He hit the third pitch. The stands went dead. They knew he was a great pitcher, but they also knew he couldn't run. Two men came across the plate, and Monty made a dive for first. Monty was safe! Monty had given his team a one-run lead. Now all he had to do was to hold that lead. But over on the other bench, the Western All-Stars were listening to the man. Stratton's really pitching. Now, look, fellas, don't try to power the ball. Just uh, get in there and then bunt. Oh, no, no, yeah, I, I, I know. I hate to do this, but we got to get on. Now go on. Bunt toward the mound. Yeah, and keep bunt. And that's just what they did. Two successive bunts. Two men were on base. Well, there goes his ball game, Barney. They're bunting it right out from under him. Oh, it, it just don't seem right. They know he can't run to the ball. And there's nothing he can do about it, now. Two on and nobody out. They're talking to him. Mr. Higgins and the catcher. Well, he went eight full innings. Not bad for a guy with one leg. Sure looks like they're all going to bunt, Monty. What can we do about it? Well, I'll just have to get off the mound quicker, that's all. I know what to expect now. That's good enough for me, Monty. Stay in. All right. Play ball. Play ball. The third batter bunted, too. Only this time, Monty nailed him. But the other two men advanced. One out now. Man on second, a man on third. And they crossed him up again. They started swinging hard. No more bunts. Even a long fly ball would tie up the ball game. But Monty struck the batter out. Just one more man to go, and he'd win his ball game. But this one man was Big Johnny Lindell, the power hitter of the league. One man to go, just one man. Monty took his time. He looked around his outfield, the runners on the bases, and then burned that ball across the plate. It was a line drive, a scorcher between the mound and first base. Instinctively, Monty died for it, sprawling out on the grass. He couldn't hold on to it, but he had knocked it down, and he crawled after it, and Lindell went racing down the baseline. There was no time to get to his feet. Monty threw the ball as best he could. Lindell was out. The game was over. Monty had won. And now his teammates were picking him up, carrying him off the field. And Ma just sat there. You couldn't tell what she was thinking. Not unless you knew Ma as we knew her. But in Ethel's face was the whole story. In Ethel's tears and in Ethel's smile. Monty Stratton won. Not just a ball game, he won and is leading a rich, full life. He stands as an inspiration for all of us, living proof of what a man can do if he has the courage and determination to refuse to admit defeat. Before our stars return for their curtain calls, here's Libby Collins to tell the ladies what's a foot for fashion this spring. A girl will put her best foot forward in a red shoe. Red is one of the smartest accessory colors for spring. A wonderful way to dramatize a pink costume or to contrast navy. For a well-turned-out ensemble, wear very sheer nylon stockings with a strong rosy cast with your red shoes. The wrong stocking shade can ruin the effect as completely as a run. 
It's easy to keep that rosy glow if you wash stockings after every wearing with Lux Flakes. This gentle care keeps color truer, cuts down needless stocking runs. Scientific strain tests prove what a difference in wear Lux Flakes can make. Using a strong soap or rubbing stockings with cake soap make runs come much sooner. Identical stockings washed with Lux Flakes lasted twice as long. That's just like getting an extra pair of stockings every time you buy a pair. Hollywood studios know that. They insist on Lux Flakes for stockings and all nice washables. These tiny diamonds of Lux make suds amazingly fast. Freshen nylons safely in a jiffy. In fact, they take such good care of stockings, over 90% of all makers recommend Lux Flakes. Better get a box tomorrow. Use it for your precious nylons and for all your nice washables to give them that lovely Lux look. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. After tonight's performance, it's easy for all of us to understand why the Stratton story was voted America's favorite picture of the year. And here are two of the reasons. Jimmy Stewart and June Allison. Thank you very much, Bill. I think June and I'd both like to tell the audience that we feel very complimented by the selection of the Stratton story for Photoplay Gold Medal Award. Oh, yes, indeed. We're very grateful to the moviegoers of America. You know, it's wonderful to have you back with us, June. And uh, as for you, Jimmy, there's just one question that I... Yeah, like... well, Bill, I feel fine. The honeymoon was wonderful. Married life's great. I, uh... Hope we have six children, preferably boys and girls. And my wife said to be sure and bring home Lux Flakes. <laughs> well, Jimmy, that answers everything. And you and June will find a supply of Lux Flakes waiting for you. Well, thank you, Bill. <laughs> Say, Jimmy, I hear uh, MGM has starred you in a fine new picture, Malaya. And there's a there's another actor in it. I can't think of his name. What is uh, it? Uh, yeah, it's called the name of Tracy. Uh, Spencer Sp Tracy. Sp yeah. Yes. Yeah, wonderful actor. Very good <laughs> actor. Well, that seems like a very happy combination. But right now, we want to congratulate you, Jimmy, on receiving the Photoplay Award for being the actor of the year whose performance was most enjoyed by the fans. Uh, I'm really grateful, Bill, and. Uh... I'd like to po I'd like to point out <laughs> I'd like to point out that there's a very beautiful girl named June Allison who is also receiving a citation tonight for her work during the year. Thank you, Jimmy. Of course, everyone's been wonderful. By the way, shouldn't we be leaving for the Beverly Hills Hotel? Mm -hmm. Yes, right after the broadcast, you'll both receive your awards at the gala dinner there. George Murphy will be presiding as master of ceremonies, and most of the big stars in Hollywood will be there. Well, before we leave, Bill, what's the play for next week? Jimmy is one of the most unique comedies to come out of Hollywood this season. The intriguing drama, A Letter to Three Wives. And we'll have two original stars from the 20th Century Fox picture. Beautiful Linda Darnell, and a brilliant new star making his first appearance on this stage, Paul Douglas. Oh, that's wonderful entertainment, Bill. You know, uh, there's just one more thing I'd like to say. There's a fellow down in Texas who gets my award for courage and, well, uh, what ball players call moxie. He's got it. Monty Stratton. Good luck, Monty. Good night, Bill. Good night. Good night, and all our thanks for a memorable evening. Lux girls are lovelier. They have the charm of fresh, appealing skin. Never neglect the gentle, protecting care that guards complexion beauty. Here's a tip from Jane Wyman, famous screen star. She says, My Lux Soap facials are so quick and easy. I smooth the creamy lather in well, rinse, then pat with a soft towel to dry. Now my skin feels softer, smoother, looks so fresh. Try Jane Wyman's daily Lux Soap care for quick new loveliness. It really works. Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time in tests by skin specialists. So next time you shop, be sure to get Hollywood's fragrant white beauty soap. Remember, nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Paul Douglas and Linda Darnell in A Letter to Three Wives. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood.
Kurt Allison appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Nancy Goes to Rio, starring Ann Southern and Jane Powell. Heard in tonight's play were John McIntyre as Barney, Cliff Clark as Jimmy Dykes, Larry Dobkin as Ted Lyons, George Neese as Bill Dickey, and Helen Brown as Maw. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Letter to Three Wives, starring Linda Darnell and Paul Douglas. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.